kirtan from external to internal to open up the heart chakra. So the sound vibration enters into the ear and penetrates into the heart and purifies the heart from all the negativity that's in our hearts, from all that lust, from all that anger, from greed, from envy and jealousy, from pride, from prejudice, from bigotry, from illusion. So we have to allow the mantra to enter into the ear by full concentration, focus, full focus of our concentration on the mantra. So the mantra can do its work. The whole purifying process takes place within our heart by the mantra. All we have to do is give the full focus of our attention. Not give you, you know, so in other words, you have to do the process correctly. If it's done correctly, you get the result. Let me just give you an example. We've all had a headache. Sometimes it's just a pounding headache. So we go to the <coughs> chemist and we get some tablet, whatever that tablet is that you get. You read the instructions, swallow it with water, you do it, your headache goes away. But supposing you take that same medicine, but instead of swallowing it with water, you just hold it in your hand. Hour after hour, you're holding that medicine in your hand, very sincerely, very dedicated. Did your headache go away? It doesn't go away. Why? Because you did something wrong. You didn't follow the process. So it's the same with this chanting. If you do it wrong, you don't get the result. If you do it right, you get the result. What is the wrong way and what is the right way? Let's just focus on that for a moment because I want you to leave here and take something with you that will benefit you for your entire life. I'll give you an example. All of us were in school. You all remember sitting there, professor <coughs> speaking, you take notes. The reason you take notes is so when it comes time for the exam, you can spill, spill it back out and pass the exam, right? So we've all done that. But who remembers that while sitting there in the class, all of a sudden, your mind starts wandering? And then you don't hear what the professor is saying, and you miss the point, and you have to either look at your neighbor or ask him, you know, can I copy your notes later on? So that you can write down the points that you missed. Does that sound familiar? Inattentive. Yeah. yeah. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? So what happened there? This is a very valuable lesson in life. You should write this down. If you think, you can't hear. If you think, you cannot hear. That means that while you're chanting the mantra, if you're thinking, you can't hear the sound vibration. In other words, the door is closed. If you don't hear the sound vibration, it doesn't enter into the ear, it doesn't enter into the heart, it doesn't purify your heart. In other words, if your focus of concentration is elsewhere, you miss out. Nobody home. <laughs> but earlier, the first thing that we spoke about is that we're not these bodies, we're the consciousness within. So if the consciousness within goes somewhere else, goes either to the past or to the future, but it goes somewhere else while I'm chanting, means the door is closed and I can't hear the mantra and the purification process is reduced by about 95%. We may sometimes be doing it on automatic pilot, 
But that's no way to begin a loving relationship with anyone. And Krishna knows that as a fact. He's not interested in any of this automatic pilot, empty ritual stuff. It doesn't attract him. He's seen it for millions of years, has no interest in it. He wants the real deal. He wants genuine love, genuine focus, genuine feeling. And then you have established a relationship with the Supreme. Everyone's looking for a loving relationship. And we're all imperfect lovers. Is anybody here a perfect lover? No, we're all imperfect lovers. And we're looking for a relationship with other imperfect lovers. And what do we end up with? Imperfect love. It's logical. But what happens when the imperfect lover connects to the supreme perfect lover? Do we bring him down to our level or does he bring us up to his level? Ponder that for a moment. If you want perfect love, divine love, you got to connect to the source. That's what we talked about earlier. You have to go against the current, back to the source. So if you think, you can't hear. If you can't hear, you're missing out on 95% of the benefit. Just think about it. Supposing you meet someone, and you thought, this is the nicest person I've ever met. This person has all the qualities that, are, that I find the most attractive. But while that person's speaking to me, I'm lost in thought, and I'm thinking this, that, and the other thing, and then the person says, well, what do you think about that? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't hear. What did you say? What kind of impression did we leave? Was it a good impression? Would that person thought, think that maybe we were rude? Uh, is it? We weren't listening? Would they might think we're, we were rude? They could come to that conclusion. Could they think that maybe you were insulting them? They feel insulted? Could they feel insulted? They're speaking, you're not listening? So why are we doing that with Krishna? That you have to, you have to ask yourself. And that's the process of self-realization. Understanding what you're doing, why you're doing it, and how to make it better. Because if anyone's worth doing your best for, it's Krishna. 